Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial, and you're welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers, you are very welcome. I continue with the prophecy entitled, The Sodomy Ritual, The Dirt of Hollywood, Part 2. This is not the last prophecy in the series. This is just the part two of it. And when I say part two, it's talking about Hollywood. It's talking about the upper echelons, um, the entertainment industry. Um, God is warning what goes on in that industry, especially at the very top. So this prophecy was received July 17, 2022. And the first part of this prophecy focuses heavily around the celebrity Beyonce, her life, her husband. And so I've already completed that part and shared in that prophecy, along with speaking about that couple, the gross and severe wickedness that is going on in the centers of money, how God says that the more money you get, the less accountability there is. And that's because you can simply make bothersome things like parking tickets and human trafficking investigations go away. Wickedness is sharper when you have money, when you have influence, when you have the ability to shut down anything that would force you into accountability. And therefore, the Lord was saying that it fosters a culture where people can more and more begin to exercise and um, ex explore predilections that they would otherwise never try in a society that was better monitored, better policed, and a society where citizens actually have active methods of requiring accountability from the people who are lifted up. One of the things that God has always said to me is that America is going to have a heart attack on the day it finds out who it was clapping for because many people you come to this channel and you may have a working knowledge of these things and so uh you think that this is widely known knowledge but there's 340 million of us give or take in this country and you would be shocked how people do not believe that this is true, how people do not believe that there is human trafficking in America, how people do not believe that there is human sacrifice in America. Because here's the thing, a veneer of civility can often hide the savage beast. I'll say it again, a veneer or a paper thin covering of civility. What is civility? Looking civilized, of course. How can there be human sacrifice? And how can there be eating of human body parts in a country that has automated everything? In a country that uses heat mapping at the airport to tell if the terrorist is nervous and sweating or not? How do you mix savagery with sophistication? In America's case, seamlessly. That's how. A veneer of civility hides the savage beast that lives underneath. And so I continue with the prophecy, and now I come to this part that is just what it is. This part of the prophecy is called the dirt of Hollywood, the rich and wealthy of a certain class. This is not everyone. This is the click class. This is the club class. This is the untouchable class. This is the tip of the spear. They play with human feces, human waste. What comes out the back door after a good dinner? They use human waste to degrade and demoralize others. It is part of the ritual. The Lord says that they enjoy it. So please understand as you are having gag reflex, choke reflex, Oh my goodness, reflex. This is other people's enjoyment and pastime. He says they enjoy using the most defiling substances of the human body, whatever we produce as waste. So this is feces and urine. And they have intercourse in it. I spoke of this in the sodomy ritual, that they will wait until a person, male or female, has to use the bathroom, and that is the time that they will sodomize them. He says they also place it upon the bodies, and yes, I saw this, people in bed playing with this, rubbing this on the body, and they put it in the mouths of their, initi their initiates, their slaves, and their captives. I will repeat that. They put urine, R. Kelly, and feces in the mouths 
of the people that they are initiating into the brotherhoods and the sisterhoods, the people that they are initiating into the boys clubs, the people that they are initiating into higher and higher and higher levels of the demonic circles. They put it in the mouths of the people who are their sex slaves, the people that they keep in the bondage houses, the human trafficking victims and captives. They make people eat human waste and have sex in human waste. They smear it on the bodies of their captives and the sole reason, the only reason that they are doing this is for humiliation and defilement. They are only doing it to bring gross shame and defilement upon the human being because they know how precious people are to God. And this is why every prophecy on the master's voice, I pray that the Lord will always lead me seamlessly into reminding people that this is all about Jesus and what the devil wishes to do to the kingdom of God and people. I didn't say just the, the kingdom, the kingdom of God, meaning the people of God. No, Satan hates humanity equally. It doesn't matter if a person is born again or not. Once you see a person strung out on crack, strung out on fentanyl or whatever, the, the, the many drugs out there that I do not know, Satan is attempting to destroy this house because in this broken down house, it's a struggle for the Holy Spirit to stay when there's sin. Even if it's not drug sin, even if it's not murder or something like that, it's a struggle for the Holy Spirit to stay, to stay even when a woman is shacking up with a man that she's not married to. How can the Holy Spirit be dwelling in there? The temple is defiled. It's difficult for him to live in a house that is doing things that cause him to lift off and leave. And the devil knows that. And that's why they defile these people. They defile these people to the point that even if there's the big bust, you see so many of the viewers of this channel keep waiting for the big bust. But in the previous video, if you listen to the end, I described the state of a six year old boy. He was six at the time of rescue. He had been adopted by an American and Australian. And the reason that those men paid for the surrogacy to have that baby. I'm not sure if the surrogacy was on the books or off the books, but they paid about $8,000 or $9,000 for somebody to carry a baby for them. The sole purpose was to traffic the child. There is video of one of the fathers performing sex acts on the child who was two months old. So a lot of these little boys, you leave them with their babysitter and you think, well, she's 19 and he's six. She can't do anything to him. She absolutely can because in their sick minds, she has all the parts and he has all the parts. And even if she doesn't actually do the act with him, there are many inappropriate and horrible ways to touch little boys. People don't listen to little boys when they are abused. And then those little boys grow up and become men and nobody wants to listen to a grown man whose heart is shattered when he's talking about the things that were done to him. This is why males rarely speak about sex abuse because this society thinks that the only person who can be abused is a female, but I promise you it's not the case. God is constantly showing me youth. This is ages 13 all the way up to 20 showing me grown men, how they catch them, tie them and do things to them that have those men screaming until the cords of their neck stand out. And they put some kind of filthy, sometimes they put a filthy rag in the mouth and tie the mouth. But then other times they put some weird ball that has uh, chains. Let's talk about it. They put some kind of ball that has two chains in the mouths of those men and then hog tie them at the elbows behind. If there's a bust and you catch a 15 year old boy and save a 28 year old man out of that situation, you're bringing that man out into what? A lifetime of reliving that horror, a shell of a man. These people, the ultra high level who make others do the rituals, serve the devil. And the devil hates the human body for the human body is the glory and image of God. For I have said, please bear in mind that the Lord was speaking directly to me and I was just writing it down. 
So this was him speaking it to me. And then he got to the point where he was explaining what he said in the beginning. For I have said, let us make man in our own image. To Satan, therefore, the height of defilement is to produce a humbled Adam and a humbled Eve. And he got that ball rolling, Satan did, when he got Adam and Eve to trade their glory for ashes by disobeying God. And he's been working on lower and lower and lower things that he can do to humanity to truly abase us. This means not just bring us down to the dust, but actually pull us into the bowels of the earth with the things we're willing to do to ourselves, with the things we're willing to do to our partners and then say, oh, we're just trying this out and you know, this is love. And then the things that people are willing to do to innocents and to victims. So many, many, many people out there, they practice this weird kind of shattered morality that I personally do not understand. So if a person has a prison record and then something horrible happens to the person with the prison record, many in America go, but yeah, but he, he had a conviction. This is a very sick and twisted society. He, he had a conviction. So of course, all crimes are up for grabs when it comes to him. You see, she, she was a prostitute. So if she gets raped, there are people who will say, well, you know, what's more sex? It's just that this John didn't pay her. This is, this is the sentiment sleeping in the heart of people. And then when I say that Russia and China will come here under the direct hook, hook of Jesus Christ, that God says he will stir these people up in their nation until even the five-year-olds will be responding the way they responded in Nazi Germany, they will be so impassioned by national pride and they will be like the enemy is America. And, and it is not only the personal grievances that these countries have against America. It will be this sense of indignation that this country is so defiled that it does not deserve to live among the nations anymore. And when you hear these countries saying this, more and more when you hear them laughing, how America soon won't have any men left, either because men will not be being born, because women with women and men with men don't give birth to new men. Or when you hear them laughing about how the army is recruiting now, then we, we talk about it at a surface understanding. What's happening? Why do they hate us too much? But you don't understand that the master the master weaver of all things, Jesus, is at work and he is braiding a rope. And when God is done braiding a rope, he's going to hang this country, not only for the things she does on the outside, but for the many sleeping iniquities that are in the hearts of everyday people like myself and yourself. People walking around and saying, well, we can only cry for the innocent. The innocent didn't have a prison record. The innocent was not a prostitute prior to her murder. Maybe if she wasn't prostituting, she wouldn't have been murdered. Satan's job is to bring the human being down to their most shameful and lowest state. And the Lord says, whoever agrees to this type of defilement of having urine on their body, being urinated on, having urine or feces put in your mouth, some of these stars, the Lord says that, yes, they have had to eat poop to get their deal. He says, whoever agrees to this in exchange for mere riches, he says, you humble your own skin and you bring baldness like shame on your own head because they're recording these things. These encounters are recorded on camera and then they're used as collateral to rule and control people later, to threaten them into compliance, into doing even worse things by saying, if you don't do it, your tape will be released to the media and everyone will see what you did. He says that those who are being initiated often do not know that the first act is being recorded. And then after that, it becomes impossible to refuse 
to perform other acts upon request. And I spoke in the previous video of how many men in the entertainment industry, this is movies, this is rappers, they make them wear dresses. Think of all these guys. Tom Hanks, he wore a dress. I think uh, Jeff Bridges also, don't quote me on that, but definitely Brad Pitt wore a dress. Jamie Foxx wore a dress. Snoop Dogg wore a wig. Um, Kevin Hart wore a dress. And Dave Chappelle said, you wear the dress. They humiliate them. Robin Williams wore a dress. Um... Martin, Martin Lawrence wore a dress. And Tyler Perry, all that he is, was built on dresses. So it, it is marketed as comedy, but God says that some of the, these men, their hearts got tired of the dress ritual. Some of these men only had to do it once. You have to go out in public wearing the dress. A lot of the rappers wear the dress, but some of them embrace the dress life. After a while, they become completely emasculated, and then they're out there in the latest pink floral by themselves. The Lord spoke of this thing spreading across West Africa in Nigeria, the nation of Nigeria and other nations. He mentioned saying that men are starting to cross-dress as a way to get popularity and to, to get likes. But what people don't understand is that this is the blossoming, the blooming of the spirits, the big daddy demons that gatekeep these sins. And he said that this is the sign of the end because once men start laying with men in a widespread and a widespread accepted lifestyle, he said, I will destroy it all. So things on camera that force people into doing more things on camera, that force people to do more things on camera, things on camera that are sometimes put in movies for us to watch. People are doing their rituals in the movies. People are being forced to do these sex scenes. I'm like, if this is being normalized in, in, the, in, the, um, in the press, if the press is spamming this at us, like, watch this brave scene. I'm like, why, sh why should we watch this brave scene? We can always stay at home and read a book. Why, why would we pay money to see this? These people are humiliated constantly. And that's because they have put their hand in a steel trap that they can't put it out. Many men in Hollywood, men that are in position of power, men who are so rich that you would never think they need anything from anybody, sports men, men in finance, men in Formula One racing, men in the golfing world, men in many different places. Medicine, business, property, politics, law, movies, music stars, rap stars have been put in this position that I'm speaking of, of doing things on camera. And he said that they remain stuck there to this day. They are held captive by the things that they've done because it's been recorded and it's being held over their heads as collateral and fear and shame means that they cannot come out of this captivity. They are told there is a level that you can get to of power, wealth, and fame. In fact, not fame. That's too low. We can offer you global notoriety. We can promote your career on all seven continents. Imagine people so arrogant that they tell you that they can promote a career for you in Antarctica. We can give you the kind of reach reserved for the kings and the gods. We can make you more famous than the famous. You will be the star to the stars. But this is the price. And here's the thing. God says that the price is never hidden from them. They always know what they're getting into, these superstars, entertainers. The, 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 the gatekeeping is revealed to them at a certain point. And I definitely spoke about this. The Lord revealed this. In the political prophecy that is called what you never heard before, how they shop among the wives, daughters, and sons, and partners of powerful men who are desperate to rise higher in, in, the, in the court circuit, like desperate to go from being, I guess, a magistrate to a judge to a, to a Supreme Court judge. They're desperate to rise in their careers as aldermen and as... Um, senators and things like that. And they will, 
the boys club, the tip of the spear, the top of the top, they watch even among the lower level to see who of their associates down there has a nice wife, whose daughter just turned 16, whose son looks really good playing for the Cleveland Browns. And then they will make that person this offer. The Lord says they even shop among the police officers' wives, that they have runners. I spoke of this in the first Beyonce prophecies, that they have spotters and runners in the crowd looking for who just arrived from Ohio and is looking to get promoted. And they look among even the police officers who has a good wife. And you know how cops are about their wives and their families, but they shop even among them. And that's why this country has so many dirty cops. You have no idea how filthy the insides of the authority structures of this country are, and everybody's just putting that little tagline on Facebook, the boys in blue and the blue lives, you better begin to focus on Jesus' lives matter because all the things that people support and all the things that people follow and all the flags that people wave, they will all fall away before the expose of God. And I'm telling many people that find this channel, even if you found it for the first time, the pain that people are going to feel when their heroes are exposed is going to be monumental. God said, that the TV at some point in the future will become the star of the home. The Lord said he's going to rock this country with revelations until people will be gasping for air like little gold fishies that fell out of the bowl by accident. He said the TV will be the star of the home as scandal after expose is hitting with regularity until Americans can't breathe to find out what the society is really like and what people really do, and who was really who, and who was really 35 in a movie that looked like a spy movie where it was a dad and his spy kid, and he was sleeping with the spy kid. That was her entry price because her parents had the wisdom to leave them in that world. So the price is never hidden. They know what they're getting into, and they cannot be commanded to take their offers. He said that they pressure many of them, that they threaten many of them, but they cannot be commanded because the nature of covenant, covenant that you enter into, the Lord says that the Baphomet God, this upside down God that is basically Satan does not want a slave. And do you know, again, it is a mockery of what our God wants from us. God gave us free will and everything that we do for him and give him must be freely given. And Baphomet, who is nothing but a demon, also wants willing participants because he wants to be able to say that his covenant is free will, like God's is. So, willingness of the victims to place themselves in the hands of the various gods that they're paying their prices to is key. They must agree. But the Lord says that the covenant they are entering into, it doesn't matter, like I said, finance, sports, business, property, medicine, law, politics, Movies, law enforcement, music stars, TV stars, radio stars, shock jocks have done this. Hot 10 this, cool 105, wherever in the country they may be, WXKJYT, they do this to move up. He says that almost none of them actually understand what they're getting into because they're covenanting with the spiritual realm in real time with Satan himself, and they don't know what's coming next. He says they rationalize it. They think about it and they say, this is pretty filthy or this is pretty tough, but I will get this if I do this. They say, I will get this and this and this and this, and the more they think about it, this is sin. Sin is like a little piece of acid that works it, its way through the clothing, through the flesh, until it at least works it, its way into the heart. They rationalize all the things that they will get, and it seems like just a small moment in time. And then comes a, a plan where they're put into an altered mind state. It could be spells that are done on them. It could be something slipped into their drink. It could simply be giving an 18-year-old model alcoholic beverages that are stronger than she's ever had when she was in her parents' home. And she'll be thinking, I'm having all this liberation. I'm having all this freedom. And then she passes out. 
And then there's eight men on her or eight men on a young man. And it's recorded. And then afterwards, when you wake up sore and destroyed, then they tell you, you did good. We'll be in touch. And that's exactly what I heard them say in the visions that God was showing me. I think it was in 2020 with the political world that they will ask for your wife and have her come over for a night of fun and games involving her backside and her face. And then afterwards they will squeeze her on the shoulder and tell her, you did God, you did good. You did, you did good for you and Todd. We'll be in touch. The rituals are recorded. The people doing these things think that it's in secret, but it's actually used as collateral. And God said that one person that this happened to is the very young woman who sang the song Dirty, Christina Aguilera. He said there is a reason she is singing this. There is a reason for the total transformation that you see of that young girl in the video, the song. He said her initiation is complete. Her price is paid. Let us go into this. All industry players recognize when somebody has paid the price for their ritual. The biggest and most telling price is how the victim changes. And if there is one person who is a lifelong lasting example of this, it is the young woman known as Miley Cyrus, who for years was one of the greatest beacons of American girlhood you could safely leave your daughter and her friends with Hannah Montana and run out and do the shopping and come back and find them staring in awe at a six hour Hannah Montana marathon. And then one day the TVs went on, the child was shaven. She was wearing about two handkerchiefs worth of clothing, talking about a wrecking ball and being so suggestive that even if even if you've been exposed to certain things, you just had to blush on her behalf. You had to blush on behalf of Mr. Billy Ray Cyrus and think, dad, were you in on this? Were you at home when they were flouting or flying by the ideas for this video? That's how you know what an initiate has done. God said, when you see somebody change like that, when you see sweet little Beyonce with her friends, in Destiny's Child, and then she suddenly comes bursting out of a car with nothing on, that's the initiation ritual. That's the signal to the industry that the covenant is complete. Older people, you may be wondering why this is necessary. If, you've, if you're safe in Christ, have a care for your grandchildren because these are your grandchildren's gods. Remember, you don't live with your grandkids, their parents do, and maybe their parents are secular and just don't care about all this and just think, oh, mom, it's harmless. It keeps her quiet. I'm trying to work. I'm writing my book. These are the people who are raising and who have raised our generation. And so when you talk to them about this, they deny that it's true. And this is how the evil flourishes because nobody believes it said the total 100% snap about face from the previous character into a new character, whether it is in the kind of movies that they make and the kind of movies that they used to make and the kind of music that they make now and the kind of music that they used to make. Just as Christina Aguilera used to make sweet Diddy Bop songs and then showed up half naked in stirrup pants, and provocative underwear, rubbing dirt all over herself. Does anybody remember the earlier part of the video about what they rub on the body? This is the sign that a person has completed their initiation and paid their price for the fame that will follow. So when you see someone depart totally from what they were doing and appear, boom, as a new person, risque and so foreign to the watchers, it is almost like a second entity has taken that person's place. God says the die has been cast. The offer that was made, the contract is accepted. The ritual is done. The old person dies and rising like a phoenix from filthy ashes is a new man or woman negatively reborn. But this is what God says. I will make an example of them. They will be a small taste of what all the wicked will receive.
It is their habit to defile themselves with themselves, but I will not overlook it. I will repay, says the Lord. And just like that, he changed the conversation. This part is called sorcery in high places. The U.S. government is subject to very strong witchcraft and sorcery happening at the highest level. It is an irony, he was saying, that a place that people think is run by independent speech, free speech, Americans say, free speech, the speech is not free. If you breathe too hard on YouTube, you get banned. Free speech is ideology, but it's no longer a firm and established reality in this country. God says the irony is that a place, speaking of the government, that people think is run by independent speech and free thinking is in fact totally subject to the whims of people who worship the devil. The highest levels are worshiping the devil. Active witches in government practicing high level sorcery fully committed to their craft and yet they hold public office and two people the lord named were nancy pelosi and maxine waters they are both in this there is high level sorcery in the u.s government piercing the body of the governance like swords perverting any true goodness of purpose that may once have existed in government and replacing it with unhindered loyalty to their Lord, who is Satan. And I spoke of this briefly in a past video saying that what will happen, what happens in the Christian community now is so far away from what this country used to be just decades back, less than a hundred years back. The premier statesmen, the premier mayors, the leaders, the sheriffs of towns, down to the grainiest, lowest level of local government was all Christians. The towns, the cities, these were men and women who went to school, who took civic education seriously, understood their duties as citizens, and did not shy away from it. But Satan is a subverter. And the way Satan does it is Satan will never march down the street going, me for president, me for president, me for leader, me for mayor. Satan will simply eat away at the bottom of the thing by telling people, isn't this too strict? Isn't this too strict? Isn't this too strict? And then one or, people, one or two people who want to do the this say, yeah, it's too strict. So the next time they go to vote, they vote against the righteous standard of God. They vote for the other side. And that's how Satan gets them slowly taking the M&Ms from one jar into his jar until one day you look, there's only three righteous people who could stand for mayor and the rest of the town feels like 15 unrighteous guys who are going to break prohibition laws and they're going to break the censorship bureau is too tough. We need to see those breasts in the movies. And eventually the society crumbled and all the righteous people, when they saw the wave of unrighteousness coming, even though the Bible says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of God should raise up the standard. All of them, well, just, I just don't know what this is. And they stayed home and they kept quiet. And so Satan took the ballot every time. People don't send their children to school now with any idea that they should run for any form of public office. All the secular people are doing it. So all the secular people take all the seats. They carry the votes. They have the say. And there's nobody anywhere in entertainment, nobody anywhere in artistry, nobody anywhere, hardly anywhere. Sports, wherever it is, it is very rare to see a person who will stand for God. So all the God people grow together and they come together like clams and they form cliques and enclaves and just say, I just, I just wish God would burn it all. But God is not going to burn it all because life doesn't work like that. In life, a tug of war happens. Righteousness, unrighteousness, evil and good, constantly pulling at the rope for supremacy. And because this is earth that God ceded to Adams and Eves, it is either the unrighteous Adams will take it, or the righteous Adams will perhaps listen to an Eve and think about things a second time. So that is what God said witchcraft and sorcery in the government. The next part is called the USA is vulnerable. America has given away her security, her most important secrets, things like nuclear codes and strategic sensitive data 
that should protect the country, those things have already been given away to countries like Russia, North Korea, and China. And this is because in all the Russia and China series, the Lord kept revealing and I kept saying that there are people from the lowest level, the granular level, where they have moved in, they have immigrated, and they have been living here for two to three generations. So they have already given birth to children who are also agents here. And they live here and they are just waiting to get a signal. God said that in entertainment, sports, business, all parts of life, Russians live here. They have seamlessly blended into American society. You cannot tell the difference. Don't even think that you're going to start staring at your neighbor funny because your neighbor is looking at you and thinking that you are the Russian. That is how well blended they are all the way up to the top most halls of power in the country. So that's happened from the ground level up. But also God says that there are tons of spies in the government and they have sold this stuff away because they are American, but they have no law love for the country. They're the kind of people who just want to watch the world burn. So they have sold these secrets and they have been double agents forever. This is a done deal that I'm speaking of. America's military outposts, foreign, domestic, are already known to the Russians. Every military post is known to them. Even the highly elite and secret posts where Marines train and special forces train. They have meticulously marked everything out on various maps and they have circulated to all the people who are working with them. The nation is totally compromised and the fruit of it will only be seen on her personal judgment day. And then the last thing, judgment for unjust prisoners of war. Nukes will fly to American outposts. This is basically military bases. God just calls them outposts. Nukes will fly to American outposts, foreign and domestic, and no help is going to come for America from abroad or from inside the country. This means that NATO will act like they're blind and deaf and dumb on the day that things begin to go south for America. It also means that if no help can come from inside the country, it means that her own military people and her military will be completely unable to answer the size of the threat, the speed and the suddenness of the attack that will come. The Lord said that there are nukes from Cuba pointed to hit America. There are nukes from Nicaragua pointed to hit America and from other countries that surround this nation. So that might be Canada. He says that there are missiles in South America that are aimed on America and yet America doesn't even know that other countries have nukes. So I don't know if this is the big ones that in the movie where they press it and you see it going up into the sky like a rocket, or if it's possible that there are smaller ones, because I always thought, I'm not sure what a nuke is. It might be a missile or it might be an actual nuclear weapon because I thought that they were monitoring who has nuclear weapons. And I don't think that South America qualified as people who have it, but God said in capital letters, he insisted. And so I wrote it in capital letters because he was being emphatic. South American countries have nukes pointed on the U.S. and she doesn't even know that they have it. The next thing the Lord spoke of Guantanamo Bay. He said Guantanamo Bay is like an eyesore, which means a horrible thing to see in the landscape. An eyesore on the border between America and Cuba. He said that in the dark halls of Guantanamo and in its cells, men have screamed and cried as they were tortured. Men have screamed and cried repeatedly that they are innocent that they are not terrorists, that they do not hate America, that they don't know anything about military stuff, that they're just normal people that America is mistaking for someone else. Insisting, says the Lord, celestial, people have died on America's soil, insisting and pleading for their release. They have died on the floors of their cells in filth, insisting that they are not terrorists, insisting and crying, pleading to see their wives and their families again. 
and they were never given the chance until they died. In the day of my vengeance, it will be Americans who will sit in Russian custody, screaming and wailing that they are teachers and accountants, lawyers and sanitation engineers, screaming that they are not terrorists and that they don't hate Russia, screaming that they don't know anything about the military, insisting, says the Lord, insisting that they do not belong there and that they only want to see their wives and children again. And they will not see them. They will receive this same hopeless death of protesting about their innocence that their country has given to others. Mix her a cup and make it double. Force her to drink it to the dregs until she is reeling and drunken. This is the word of the Lord. And the verses for this are, Awake and rise up, O Jerusalem, you who have drunk from the hand of the Lord the cup of his rage or fury, you who have drained the goblet to the dregs, the cup that makes men stagger. The other verse is this, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and lest you receive of her plagues for her sins have reached to heaven and God has remembered her iniquities. Render to her, which means pay back to her exactly as she paid to you. Pay her double for her works in the cup that she mixed for others, mix double for her. To the measure that she glorified herself and she lived luxuriously, in that same measure, give her torment and sorrow. For she says in her heart, I sit as a queen and I am not a widow and will see no sorrow. Therefore, her plagues will come in one day, death and mourning and famine and she will be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. And this is Revelation 18, verses 4 to 8, which is the judgment of Mystery Babylon. When you are given a staggering cup, it means that you will receive a nation, a level of judgment that people will not be able to bear. They will not be able to stay on their feet when God releases the payment for that level of a nation's sin back to it. These are sobering words. I will say no more. View how the Lord can speak of three to five subjects in a single prophecy. This video and the video before it are one prophecy. This is one time of God simply speaking to me for about an hour covering all these topics. Payment for unjustly committing rendition. Just grabbing people from other countries. Just snatch, 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 snatch. You look guilty to us. You smell guilty. We'll just take you to our country. We won't expedite you through the proper, extradite you through the proper channels. We're just going to grab you and bring you home and keep you in a prison. And if you die there, so be it. Because we're going to question you about your guilt, even if you can't even speak English and you don't know what we're talking about. And then he moves to government. And then he moves to the fact that the government is rotten. And then he moves to the fact that America herself has sold her secrets to her enemies. And the people are li living in a sitting duck nation and they don't know. And then he's talking about America's idols and gods and how he's going to tear them all down and they will fall. This is all God. All. This is Celestial with the Master's voice. And until I see you again, God bless you and goodbye.